Welcome back to the Picture This podcast, where we go a little deeper on some of the coolest photos from some of your favorite celebrities. This guy has invented another person and a word that uh, an entire nation has uh, started to chant. My my guest today, Granger Smith. How are you, buddy? Good, man. Good, good, good to see you. Earl Dibbles, where'd he come from? Earl is, was an alter ego. of yeah. it was, We were trying to promote some music we were coming out with, and 2011. Which one came first? Was it the music of Earl Dibbles? Or was no, it Ur- the character? Earl okay. the character okay. came first with no music. That, and that lived on the internet for about a year yeah. with a, a video Tyler and I were trying to promote, my brother and I. And that went viral, so then we started chasing that. And then I, I recognized that there was no reflection of this viral video in my live concert. And some people, I remember one guy told me, he said, at the merch table after the show, he said, you're a funny guy. And I said, thanks, man. And he said, but I don't see that on the stage at all. Oh. And that was, the, that was the conversation when I knew right then. Don't you love honest people, too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and every once in a while, somebody will say something like that, and, yeah. like, and that, that meant everything to me, because I thought, Earl needs a song. Yeah. So then I wrote a song, and then from then on, he was musical. And then the uh, and then Yee Yee. I don't know if you saw my, I have I have Yee Yee on my truck. Yeah. I, one side has Yee, the other side is OU. Love it. Uh, so we agree on half my truck, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we, right? okay. we do. <laughs> We're gonna go through some pictures today, some uh, memorable photos from your life. These are all pictures you personally picked. Yeah. Uh, but you also told me, depending on the day, it could be another ten or twelve photos that are completely different. I loved this process yeah. of finding. I first of all, I think it's a just a killer idea. And I loved the process, and admittedly, it took way too long because <laughs> I just got stuck. You know, I just sure. laid down on the couch and it just you just start going down memory lane when you go back on your phone as far as they go back. You know, so I, so I, I, would, I would literally just scroll and go boom that one, and I'd put it into a folder. Yeah. And so I, I realized as I was doing that, any given day, this would be completely different photos sure. depending yeah. on how my scroll of my thumb goes. <laughs> Which is fun. It makes it because you have a story about every probably every sure, photo. In, sure, in your, we all do. Yeah. Well, let's. Let, can we get political to start off with? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. The very first photo. You are. That looks like it's in front of the White House. Yeah. 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 How about that? When was this? <laughs> this was in two thousand and I believe it was eight. Okay. Two thousand and eight, and we had just gotten back from Iraq, playing our third entertainment tour. And we played that tour in uh, Christmas and New Year's. We played Christmas. That was our last tour. And then we went to the White House shortly after that. And this was W's White House. Okay. And they invited us to come up there and do like a a veterans um, party. So this is right here, the the front lawn of the White House. What do they call the South Lawn? Okay of the White House and there was a bunch of chairs and a bunch of veterans and decorated war heroes. And it was the second time we had been to the White House. The first time was a Christmas party so that we kind of had a little bit of a relationship. Now in this picture is interesting to me because I was going on no sleep. We played a show in College Station the night before. No way. And just flew? like Because I was so, I needed every penny back then. Yeah. Every gig mattered. And so I couldn't, I couldn't even look at the White House and say, we'll get a good night's sleep. I needed the, the Friday night gig. <laughs> so we drove, after the show, we packed up the trailer. We were in a van and we drove to Dallas. We got to Dallas about 5 a.m., which is where DFW was, where the flight to DC was, was happening. Right. So our flight left, I think at six. We flew to the White House and it was just this incredible picture it's the only one I think I have of that day. Incredible blue sky day, um, unbelievable experience to be there. We met George W. that day and played music there. And uh, it didn't even matter. I was so tired. It didn't matter. I didn't, I didn't feel fatigued at all. Uh, and I'm glad I got that picture out of it. Well, I, a couple of things here. Cowboy hat. Yeah. You know, wear the cowboy hat. Yeah. Looks, uh, just guessing, a little bit like a mullet. Yeah, maybe yeah, a little mullet absolutely. there. Absolutely. Right? And I can't tell who's playing drums. Is that Caleb? Is Caleb? No, playing? this whole so band. The whole the, band's different. I called it the old man band. The old. They called that the old man band. And those guys, I started with them in 2004. Okay. 
And Michael Holloman, who's on drums, lasted uh, all the way to 2010 when Caleb, who you okay. mentioned, came around. So I was with those guys for a long time, and, they, and they're all just so smart at, at music. They, they knew how to tour. They knew how to hook up a trailer yeah. and fix a flat tire if you got one in so the So they van. teach you? So I learned everything yeah. from, from those old guys. I say old. There's, they were as old as I am now in yeah. that picture, oh, okay. <laughs> which yeah. is funny. Well, you're it's an old funny. man now, Granger. Right, right. I guess so. <laughs> but, I, you know, I was 20, 25 years old in that, wow. in that picture. So, um, yeah, it was... I learned everything from those guys. Hey, what's this? I can zoom in right there. That hat. Yeah, that's Uncle Mitch. That's what <laughs> I call him, Uncle Mitch. <laughs> Keep he's a, he is a, 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 a dealership, a car dealership owner in Colleen. Is he really? Yeah, and he, most of us have bought vehicles from him. Oh, that's our, awesome. My life, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's jump over to this picture right here. What's going on here? Yeah, so this is another of the random scrolls in my photo album. <laughs> this was our first annual boot walk. And this, it, ironically, it transitions well from that last picture because after my tours in Iraq, I learned so much from what I got out of those trips from the soldiers. I thought I was going to Iraq at the beginning to give back and to help and to play some music. And I didn't realize what I was gonna get in return. Learning about First of all, that we're a country at war, although it doesn't ever seem like it. Yeah. We're still a country at war to this yeah. day. It doesn't yeah. feel like it at all. You don't look around and go, there were a country at war. You don't see it on the news either. You don't see it on the news. Yeah. You don't hear about it. Yeah. But there's men and women fighting right now as we speak yeah. in the streets in the Middle East. And I, I saw that the seven days a week, 24-7, they're always on call. Um, unbelievable hours they work over there. And they all signed up to do that. Yeah. So when I came back here, I, I looked around and I was like, man, it's like no one even knows that our sons and daughters and brothers and sisters are over there doing what they do. So I, yeah. wanted, to, I wanted to be able to create something for civilians to get involved and to feel that same kind of patriotism that I felt. So I thought, What's, what, I could, what could I do? I'll walk 100 miles from South Austin to Fort Hood over the course of five days and my wife was like, you're gonna do what? So, so I decided that I would walk and I would invite people to come walk with me and I, we would walk for patriotism and morale yeah. and just to spread the message. It wasn't even raising money at all. Uh, it was just to, to spread a little bit of patriotism. So this was, this was what we called in this picture, it was a sock change. So we learned from the soldiers that every Every two and a half miles, we needed to stop, no matter what. And some people hear that and they're like, why would you stop our two and a half miles? Well, for the longevity of walking 20 miles a day, oh, man. We, would, we would stop at two and a half miles, um, we would take our boots off and just check, make sure everything's okay, put them back on and go. And then every five miles, we would actually change the socks and then we would, we would douse our feet in rubbing alcohol, like this picture showing. To dry them out, right? To, dry, to quickly dry them out, yeah. and then we would spray them with antiperspirant deodorant. Oh, wow. But the, the, we would rotate socks, so like one pair of socks would ride on our back, and then we would, they would completely dry out, and we would rotate them every five miles. So, so just two pairs of socks. Two pairs of socks, and that, so that's what this picture is. Well, it looks like Tyler's getting ready to run some whiteout patterns. <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Like you see, <laughs> taping up for a it game. Was, it was also the, the time when you either put a little tape on something that's sore or a Band-Aid on a blister or something like that. The first two photos you're in, this one, you're not in at all. Yeah. Just a picture of Amber. Tell me about this. I, I found that picture in my, my random scrolling. And I realized that is the last picture of Amber before she was engaged to me. Really? Yeah. This was in York, England. She doesn't know it at all, but in my pocket was the ring. Oh, wow. And I was losing my mind. I was so nervous. Hopefully <laughs> doing, I think I did a good job to hide it because she never mentioned that she even had a clue. But we were eating at a, at a place called Oscars that we just found that day. It evidently has tortillas in it, England. That's uh, what it looks it's, like. <laughs> I, I think that's um, hummus and oh, oh, is it pita okay? bread, yeah, yeah. Pita whatever. Bread. And, and so we walked that, that evening. I, I, we went on this trip to, she thought it was because of my 30th birthday. 
but it wasn't. It was because I wanted to marry her. And you had this planned out. I had it planned out. Yeah. I got the ring and I, we were going to go to England because that's where her family's from. Okay. And she had never been. And we we're going to go to this little town of York. And then we were going to take a train to Paris and see a few little towns and then head home. So I thought I'll know it when I see it, the location of the proposal. I didn't have a plan. I just thought oh, we'll walk around and in the back of my mind, I'll be looking for a place to do this. And when we got to York, we, we walked by this just beautiful cathedral called the York Minster. And she was like, this is the most beautiful church I've ever seen. And I thought, okay, this, this is it. Well, I, I will go to dinner tonight and we'll walk back to our hotel and I'll take a knee in front of the church. So we ate dinner, this is the picture of the dinner. And then, and then afterward it was raining on the walk back. So we were, it was, it was, we were sharing an umbrella, sure. you know, so we, so it's truly romantic. It was, it was, it was probably the, the last time I was romantic. <laughs> but, we'll ask her when we talk we'll to her, her how romantic it was. I had a, we had an umbrella, we were sharing it. I got on the knee uh, and from then on she was engaged to me. Hey guys, I'm Elena Martin. I'm a residential real estate agent in Austin, Texas. I just wanted to say hello and introduce myself. If you're moving to Austin, just like everybody else in the world, or if you know somebody, I would be honored to help you. I relocated here from New York City about four years ago, and I know that it is so important to work with somebody that knows the market, who is resourceful, and can get you a home in this really competitive market. So visit my website, elenamartin.com. Enjoy the podcast. So I didn't know that you were part of the A team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That looks like an A team. Tell me about this van. This is clearly a, I'm assuming a band mm -hmm. van at some point, right? Yeah. This was my first uh, band van. First one. First one. And before that was, well, I had a Suburban. And then before the Suburban, I had uh, just pickup trucks. Yeah. So this like multiple, like yes. a couple will be yes. in one, a couple will be in another one. Yes. I ran out the transmission on one, <laughs> uh, got another one, um, ran that for a while. And, th and then the second pickup, I realized there's just not enough space in here. Yeah. So then I traded that in for a Suburban. And then I realized after a few years, the Suburban just couldn't up, you know, withhold the, the wear and tear of the highway yeah. pulling a trailer. So they're not built for that. No, they're not yeah. built for that. Yeah. So I started, got in the market for a van. And Tyler and I found this van, I found it on eBay for uh, $11,000 in Newark, New Jersey. And I think it had 50,000 miles on it. That's not bad. So it was like, yeah. this is great. I couldn't find anything under 15 or 20,000. Sure. So, uh, so Tyler and I flew to Newark, New Jersey and uh, drove it all the way down. I mean, the shadiest car dealership. <laughs> I cannot believe you wonder where they got it. Like even oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I mean these guys were like, these guys were like, oh, it's, it's great, man. The van's great. Take the van. It's, you're gonna love it. Take the van. I'm like oh, what? A, can I check? Don't check under the hood. It's great. I promise. We gotta go. Like, it was like <laughs> oh my gosh. So so we drove it back, and then it became the the the, the band van, and I built bunks in the back. So in this picture, there's there is four bunks in the back, and this is somewhere, I think it's in New Mexico. And I saw this picture. I don't know who took it or why it's on my phone. I was like, man, that just really encapsulates a moment of us at a gas station. We so many gas station stops over the years. We learned the ins and outs of how to eat a meal from a gas station convenience store and what to get, uh, what to get, to get, what not to yeah. get. Um, how to hard rotate, way. yeah, the yeah. hard way. <laughs> How to rotate drivers. Yeah. Um, you know, we would we would take our driver's license and we would get them together and shuffle them up, and then we would have a drawing and draw. Okay, team oh, one, funny. driver, navigator. Team two, Todd, and John. Team three, Mitch, and Michael. And those were the teams that we. And those drive. were the teams, and the, and you were on a two-hour shift, very strict two-hour yeah. shift. So yeah. you could do whatever you want. You could switch with each other however many times you wanted. 
but you had to you had to go no more, no less than two hours. Wow. Even if you didn't feel tired at the end of it, you need to go and you rotate back and forth. There's six of you. There's six of yeah. us. So that was it was always good. Um, to, to make sure that no one was overdriving. So you got at least four hours before you had to do, exactly. do that again. Yeah. Exactly. So after a sh- we would do it before a show so that you knew how much alcohol you could have during the show. <laughs> and when you had to stop. Exactly. If you were the first drivers. Yeah. yeah. So before the show even started, we would, we would draw the teams. <laughs> and the first shift was great. First shift was amazing. Like everyone wants the first shift. Sure. You're just right off the stage. You pack the trailer. You still have the adrenaline rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Second shift was the worst by far. Yeah. Because that two hours in, you're just starting to feel tired. Yep. Third shift's pretty good. You have, you've had four hours. Yeah, exactly. You've wound down, you've taken a nap, yeah. probably, and then, yeah. 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 So this, this picture, I don't know where we are or what I'm doing here, but it's, it's the perfect little snapshot of that world. You said New Mexico. You may have... I think that's New Mexico. You could have run into Walter White. <laughs> Maybe so. He could have been Maybe at that so. same gas station. As you right then. Yeah. That's true. This one, I'm just going to guess. I don't know if this is true. Is this the beginning of Yee Yee? This is. The Yee Yee Apparel Company? This is the beginning of Yee Yee Apparel. How about that? Before it was called Yee Yee Apparel. And just you and Amber? It was just me and Amber. Um, Tyler, you know, was in, he was my manager. Sure, yeah. And I, I found this picture and I was like, wow. I, I remember there was a moment when this happened. This wasn't, it wasn't really gradual when we started getting orders. It was right after I put out an album called Dirt Road Driveway, which was linked directly to Earl Dibbles Jr., Country Boy Song. And it was like, overnight, we went from nothing to filling up this little room with these packages. And Amber's, you know, trying to stay organized and putting yee yee in these packages. And it was, uh, it was amazing. It was just, one of the coolest things in my career to, to go, oh my gosh, people, are, people actually care. After all these years of not caring, yeah. people care. It what was, year? What year was this? Uh, this was probably 2013. Okay. Yeah. So internet's rolling, that's where they're all ordering from. Yeah. What have you. Yeah. The beginning of Yee Yee Apparel. That's so cool. Was, is that the sh- was it one shirt? Was it multiple shirts? Uh, I think there was product. two, two or three shirt options. I see. It looks like the, I, I see a white one with black letters. It yes. looks like a black one with maybe a pocket and maybe something. I'm yep. guessing something on the back. And there is a CD, and mm-hmm. it's funny. It's really funny. I see that too. That I, I know exactly what that is because I just left the Yee Yee Farm to come here for this podcast, and we did a little um, video segment to, for our winter launch, just to say thank you. Oh yeah. And so I went through some old CDs and grabbed them and put them in some random boxes. Yeah. And that was one of them. And that's the single for the country boy song. Is it really? That's what that is. And, and so I know that cause I just handled that 10 minutes you know, before I got here. A couple koozies. Yeah. It looks like some koozies, koozies. and kid stuff. That's all London. <laughs> London is two yeah. years old at that the point. Yeah. Lincoln is not born yet. So like London that. is making her way around the house, you know, and, that was, uh, that was a really fun time in the Smith house. I oh. wish we were vlogging them. Oh, no, right? <laughs> Could you imagine the Smiths from 2013? Yeah. Clearly, uh, this is at night and London was asleep. Yes. Because there is a... Which was a rare. Kid monitor, too. <laughs> there's a baby monitor right there. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I was There's a baby I monitor. I didn't even see it until you noticed that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like Amber juggling baby monitor, probably exhausted, and she's shipping out orders. Either candles or paint samples for a room back there. I mean, it's funny. You can just go through all of these You're right. photos and see all the things in it. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's like, uh, Amber doing her crafts. Might her be a crafting. Home Depot sticker right there on top. I can't tell. Yeah. 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 That's some good stuff, though, man. And think about how far everything has come with Yee Apparel since then and what yeah. it is now. I mean, you just said the winter launch is what you guys, uh, you just did the winter launch yes, and probably, I guess, prepping for spring already, yeah. right? Uh, and now doing four times a year, big giant launches that sell out in a matter of minutes. I mean, I know that, uh, I think the first one may have been spring last year that I was, that I jumped in. I was like, Hey, I want this and it's gone. And it was three minutes into it or whatever, you know, it was just yeah, crazy. We feel stuff. so blessed. And What's crazy and is... It's not because you just ordered 10 of them. It's because people wanted that, you know? <laughs> well, what's crazy is I think the jump from 2013 to now 
into what we have now with the Yee Apparel. Yeah. I don't think that's as big as the jump from 2004 to, to this picture. Oh, yeah. Going from... Four to 13, yeah. From, from nothing to Amber sitting on the floor in a little room with packages, I think is a bigger deal than going from this room to the farm where we are now and yeah. having these launches. Because there, that picture, it was... We were conquering the unthinkable at the time. Yeah. I was a nobody band with everything stacked against me. What was your single at this time? We do it in a field. Okay. Mm -hmm. First right. track off of Dirt Road Driveway. And I can't tell if, that, if it was even out at the time, but I know that was around then, it would have been the first single off that album. And the kind of the, you know, the way things uh, tend to work uh, is that you identify things with what is at radio at the time, yeah. what you sent out to radio. Maybe yeah. not the one that everybody's singing along to at concerts or what yeah. have you, but from an artist on the radio side, it's what is the radio single at the time, the one that yeah, you you're try right. to get them to play. Right? The next song off of that album was called Silverado Bench Seat. Oh, yeah. And that was my first number one song in the state of Texas, okay. in the uh, regional radio, Texas. Okay. I think that's the first song I listened to from you. Uh, was uh, was Silverado Bench Seat. Yeah, Maybe I so. like the title. Maybe yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, and it was. I, I remember you. It's the, we went back to the going back to the picture of the boot walk. Did you do that with the boot campaign? Yes. So, yeah. So the the organization called the Boot Campaign. Yes. Um, and that's around that time um, uh, is when I was introduced to you. There. Okay. Yeah. Or when when I uh, first heard of Granger Smith. And, uh, and that, I think that was the first song I listened to. That's that awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we're on a bench seat. All right. So we, I don't know if this is Yee Yee merchandise, this is Granger Smith merchandise, but this looks like a, uh, it, it looks like a storage <laughs> unit full yeah. of merchandise. I, so when I found that picture of Amber on the floor, yeah. um, I needed, I felt like I needed to also include this picture because this is the next step. The, the first picture, we were storing it in our garage or it started actually in our kitchen, you know, just cabinets sure. you know, under the plates. Yeah. And then we, we started putting these boxes in the garage. And when it, when our garage got too full, I rented this storage unit. And I remember uh, taking this picture, you could see there's shelves in the background. So when we yeah. first started in the storage unit, you could actually walk in there and you could get organized. <laughs> and then it got like this, and I remember I hired, who's now still my tour manager, Chris Lee. And Chris came over because he was also the merch guy. The tour manager was also, you know, selling merch. He said, yeah. And he came over and I remember uh, I was with him this day. I took this picture because this was his job was to just find, <laughs> go find a large <laughs> something right. in there, you right. know, with some shirt. Unorganized. Yeah. No idea where anything is. And this is when I knew. A symbol case in the front. Yeah. <laughs> This is when I knew we gotta we have to rent some kind of uh, office space. This is obviously before the farm. Yes. Yeah. So, so that that led us to where we were in Round Rock. That's where this picture is. And then right down the road, I ended up leasing a in an industrial park, um, just kind of a little warehouse. Yeah. And so we moved this into there. <laughs> yeah. And I found plenty of pictures of that too. And I mean, this podcast could go forever if I just, you know, if I kept right. going. But. Would, that, would that be considered the original Yee Farm? <laughs> um, or would this? We, we didn't call it, we, it didn't have the name Farm yeah. at all. Um, so we called it The Dip, actually. We called Why it the dip? the dip. And we still have a sign that says The Dip. Um, but on the back of Earl's guitar, it said Dip. Yep. You know, and it, it was a big part of our lives at the time. So yeah. when we were trying to think of a, a, a name, I have another character named Donnie. Yes. So we thought, well, if anyone asks, we'll call it the roadie. Yeah, yeah. We'll call it Donnie's inspirational palace dip. <laughs> so the dip. That's awesome. Yeah. Acronym and everything. Yep. Uh, this, this picture right here, I still think this is the biggest moment of my career. That's I bought, cool. bought my first bus. You, you bought it. You I didn't lease it. it. I bought it. And I still have it. I still have it. Her name is Freedom. And you don't name a bus unless it's brand new. So I've never okay. never had a brand new bus. So I've always, you always inherit the name. I think it's right. the same with ships. Kind of like a boat. And boats. Yeah, yeah same thing. Yeah. So 
uh, when I bought this one, it, it was, that couldn't have had a better name, Freedom, because we were coming out of the van. Yeah. We, had, we had dabbled a little bit in leasing buses, but it was only the cheapest you could possibly lease, and so that you could just smell diesel fuel in the bunks, and it was just cigarette smoke, and it was terrible. Um, breaking down all the time. So then we went back to the van because we decided we can't, we can't afford to lease these crappy buses for multiple <laughs> reasons. So we went back to the van and we, we would just tear up the countryside um, and we were just starting to get popular. Like shows were selling out two to 300 capacity rooms. Okay. So we would go in Des Moines, Iowa and it would be sold out 320 people. And we were in the van and we could not escape. So when it's a small town and a small venue, when the show's over, your night's not over until you could get out of there. So while they're loading the trailer, everyone, where's Earl? Where's Earl? I want to talk to Earl. And there's no place I can go. And they've been drinking all They've been night drinking. Long. Yeah. So I couldn't escape. And, and fortunately, we were able to then financially consider riding in a bus because then that would allow for more shows which would allow farther, you would go farther down the road and, and make up the money that it would cost to buy the bus by you know, playing more shows. And um, this one was $204,000, which is way over <laughs> what I thought <laughs> we were gonna pay. And that's how, that's how anything is with a house or a car. Sure. You go in thinking, I'll pay, I ain't paying nothing over one buck 20. Yeah. And then you realize uh, you can get a rebuilt motor for this, and then and then. So uh, I got the loan. I got a loan, just like a house loan, thirty-year mortgage, okay. and it was like twelve hundred bucks a month. Oh wow! And I was like, I could do this. Yeah, twelve hundred bucks a month. That's all I have to do. Yeah. And uh, and it's not all you have to do. Yes. Yeah. Then you have the and upkeep and the diesel. Oh yeah, driver. I <laughs> yeah, forgot about exactly. that. Diesel. Everything. Because now you're not you're not doing the uh, you're not doing the driver's license, doing taking turns driving this no. thing, right? Yeah. No, you actually have driver. to because we're sleeping at night. Yeah. But when this when this guy pulled up, Freedom, I, I looked at that and I took that picture and I stood right there and I thought, this is the biggest moment of my career, and I don't know if I've topped That's that <laughs> because because this was in at the end of 2013. So that was nine years of, of vanning it and pickup trucks mm -hmm. and uh, no sleep. You know, I wasn't ever sleeping on the road. It was terrible to sleep. We were just seeing stars and seeing creatures in our dreams, you know, <laughs> walking across. It was like hallucinations. Yeah. So I stood right there and I thought, everything changes now. Everything, and it did. Bigger than having a number one song. I think so. Yeah. Because of the implications of having a number one song was that was big, yeah, sure. But not as big as now we're in a bus. Yeah. Now we could take that gig that's six hundred miles away the next day, and we could make it yeah. and get that paycheck. Yeah. And uh, it was it was very scary. You imagine the the buyer's remorse you have when you buy a new car. <laughs> this, what you have on this? Yeah. Triple that with yeah. the, with the bus. Yeah. Uh, but. Now, if I could, if I could go put my hand on my shoulder, then I'd say it's all right, buddy. You got, you got, you got this. Well, let's go from bus to <laughs> oh, yeah. what appears to be. So, if, you, if the bus was the the top, like yeah. you all, I made it. Yeah. What did this mean to you? The semi itself, or the wreck? <laughs> all of it. Well, <laughs> you're you're right. Um, adding a semi to our our road crew was a really big moment. Not as big as getting a, a going from a van to a bus, but going from a trailer to a semi. Sure. Where you could, you could actually- uh, you Do your own production. Take our own production yeah. and, and make our stages look nice. Yeah. And um, that was a, a really big deal. And, and in fact, when, when uh, the coronavirus hit, and we had to get rid of the truck, it was the first thing was on the chopping block to get rid of when no more concerts. And I, I thought, I still, still don't have it. So I looked at it and I thought, it might be the last time I see it. You know, it might be the last, this might be the end of this era. And this picture, there's a lot of, lot of blessings that came out of this. Um, this was on the road from Kansas City, Missouri, heading to Baltimore. 
and we just played uh, KC Nights, and it was about a 650 mile drive. This was in West Virginia, right here, the actual picture, and it's a leased truck from Penske. You see, I thought it looked like a Penske truck. Yeah, 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 yeah we had it, we had, we had had it. I mean, the plan was, we'll lease from Penske for a little bit. If we really like it, if we feel like we could afford it, then we'll get the trailer wrapped, you know, with Yee Yee. Yeah. So this was before that, and um, one late night, just a, probably three months into that truck lease, I wake up to Chris, my tour manager, in my back lounge of, lounge of my bus, and he knocks on the door and he says, hey man, I need you to get up. And it was probably five o'clock in the morning. And man, that's happened a few times in my career. Something like, you gotta get up. Yeah. And it's just, I hate that, I hate that feeling. Yeah. You know, it's you, like, you automatically go to the worst. It's, it's bad. Yeah. No, Five no one no says, get up. I got some great news. Exactly. We to share you with know, you. We'll let him sleep. When yeah. he gets up, we'll give him the good news. Yeah. That's usually how that happens. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we were in, I, we were stopped. And so first, first thing I think is, cause it's, we were traveling in two buses. So my first thought is we're broken down. I need to pack up what I had, what I need for the show and go to the next bus. That's how that happened before mm -hmm. several times. Just to get there. I own, I own the buses. And so there is no lease bailout. Yeah. They come and pick you up in another, that never happened. The, the fallout plan for us is always pack what you need right now, go get jump in the, in the other bus and we got to deal with this breakdown. Yeah. So that's what I thought cause we were stopped. And then I realized as I was coming up front, I saw through the windshield that we were in stop and go traffic. Wow, this was weird. And then I looked a little further ahead and I saw the, the underbelly of that semi. Man. And you knew right then it was yours. I did. And wow. uh, Bull, my driver, said, Charlie's okay. It's the first thing he said. Charlie was our driver. Charlie's okay. And I was like, okay. You know, that was my main thought. Sure. And so I got out and I walked up on this grass and up on the, the little hillside. And Charlie was over there just chain smoking a cigarette, just shaking, just could not stop shaking. I'm so sorry, Granger. He was from Boston. I'm so sorry, Granger. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was like, Charlie, you're okay. That's what matters. There's no one else is involved in this wreck. No one. And uh, he, just him. he was coming around. It was complete fog in West Virginia. He was going around this corner and his front left wheel got in the rocks on the left. Yep. So he overcompensated. And then his trailer started coming around. He said he looked in the mirror and his trailer was coming around at him. Oh my goodness. So he, at four or five o'clock in the morning, four or five o'clock in the oh. morning at, you know, 65 miles an hour. Right. Here's the trailer coming around. So he overcompensated one more time and it turned over and you can't quite see from this picture, but the guardrail was 12 inches from his nose. Was it through really? the windshield? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it, it was, was a miracle. It was a miracle yeah. and it was <laughs> never will I ever forget. I think this is still, um, maybe this picture is still my number one viewed Instagram post <laughs> is it of really? my life <laughs> because it's just so dramatic looking yeah. with what they did. And uh, there was, we were selling Yee Yee Energy at the time. Yeah. And there was Everywhere. Yee Yee Energy everywhere on the highway just exploded cans so this had not only your merch it had, or not everything. Only your, it had everything i had everything yeah. all the band equipment yeah. how much all of, of our did guitar, you lose all the merch everything was in there lights everything we were diligent with insurance luckily good so almost everything was covered so actually some of the guys came out better than before that you know like dusty he had this big custom drum kit yeah huge that he had built for 10 years. It was worth like seven grand. Yeah. So he got paid for the, from the insurance company and he was wanting to downsize anyway yeah. and go to a much smaller kit. Yeah. So he was able to, you know, take a few grand and get what, exactly get what, what he wanted. wanted. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I didn't lose a guitar, luckily. My guitars were actually, all of them were in cases. And we, we went and took a big wrecker took that trailer off, that, that record picked it up, and then another record picked, 
the trailer and hauled it to a truck stop. And we got in there with crowbars and, and just scrounged our way through looking for anything so we could play the show in Baltimore. Yep. And then we did play that show that night That's in Baltimore. Didn't miss it. No. Man. If freedom was a highway Freedom was a highway From Jimmy Allen and Brad Paisley Freedom was a highway Available everywhere now on Jimmy Allen's Betty James album Thanks so much for checking out the picture of this podcast once again this week. Hi guys, it's the Ant-Man. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so you never miss an episode. From week one, I told you about Zingular's eight-day jumpstart at picturethispodcast.co slash jumpstart. If you had started then, you could be down as much as 30 pounds by now. Think about this. We are 23 weeks away from summer. You lose a pound a week you could be down 23 pounds by the time that summer heat comes around. If you lose two pounds a week, you could be down 46 pounds. If you lost three pounds a week, just three pounds a week, you could be down 69 pounds by the time summer rolls around. All natural, all plant-based, totally safe. You owe it to yourself to check out picturethispodcast.co slash jumpstart for Zingular's eight-day jumpstart right now. If you really love a woman, you don't let her go Yeah, I know a few things a man ought to know Alright, tell me about this one. I, I ran across this one um, in my scrolling and I just, I thought Wow, that's this is one of these pictures that you would just not know what you're looking at here. But uh, after we lost River, my son, I went around after we got home from the hospital and took pictures around the house. And this was like his spot. He loved the, these woods and I drug that old tire out there that actually found that tire in the woods. And I drug it out there and uh, filled it with sand. So he would sit sometimes completely in that tire in the sand <laughs> with those tractors around him just for hours and hours and hours. Um, and it was, it was great because he just, he would always want to get dirty and Amber could just sit out there in a bench right next to it and read or you know, do, do whatever she needed to do. And he would just entertain Be close himself. Letting play. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I went, and I'm glad I did, but I went to a lot of little places like this and just snapped a picture because that's an untouched scene. Yeah. The last person that touched it was him. So we, were, we knew we were gonna move and, and try to start in a new, new spot for the family. And I knew that all this would be wiped away. Yeah. And I wanted to try to capture it uh, before it was, clean. It was important to you, for you and your family to start at a different place. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was, um, with my family, if it was as much about them or me really, because I could not be there. Yeah. And so maybe, I mean, it, it ties back to the family in, in the sense of I needed to leave there, uh, to be better for them, for them. Um, I, I just couldn't be, it's, it's, it's Amber and I said a lot of times, we have a million amazing memories there and yeah. one really bad one. Yeah. And it was the one really bad one that made all the rest of them not matter to me. I would rather them, like this picture, live forever in my mind like that than to us to move forward in life and things change and seasons change and, you know, and more or less it become erased, the good memories replaced. So I knew I, knew I needed to leave. Um, the neat thing about the, us leaving that house is that it was a God thing for me, for sure, but when we listed it, it sold in 11 days, and a, a veteran Air Force vet bought it who was just retiring. Really? Three kids, yeah. 
Fantastic guy. I talk to him still to this day. Do you? We That's text cool. back and forth. And I, I had done so much to this property as far as planting trees and trimming trees and planting grasses and taking down fences and countless things to the house itself. And so we still talk, you know, almost once a month on, hey, how's that? How's the oak tree? Yeah. You know, by the front gate, is it, it was leaning a little bit. You know, and, oh, it's yeah. I ended up watering it, so we. I still have this connection. I haven't been back there at yeah. all. But since the day you moved since out. Since the day we moved out. Right. But James, who lives there now, is is a vet. He's been through a lot, and he's seen a lot. Yeah. And um, it's almost as if he gets it. Yeah. He doesn't invite me there. Mm-hmm. He, he's told me one day you might wake up and you want to come and you want to come here. And on that day, I'm going to make a fire in the fire pit. I'm going to have a glass of whiskey for each of us. And we'll just sit there around the fire. I'm not going to push you on it, but I just want to let you know it's always open. You call me, you come here, we'll sit around this fire. And I was like, man, that's a God thing. Because I, what, what other person... Would, would A, even understand that, yep. and B, want to keep in touch and be that, that sensitive about it. We didn't tell him, by the way. He somehow knew, found out through the neighborhood or something but, um, about what happened, but he's just outstanding gentleman. That's super cool. And what a, what a like when you don't know what to say, like you, I think that often. You know, I'm yeah. not sure what to say in this instance. Let me pray about it. Let me think about it. And, and then you hear people who, whose hearts are just like that, just naturally. Yeah. It's so encouraging to hear too. <sighs> Absolutely. He, he just recently, last year, it's been, a, been a few years. So it was, I think last summer, he went into the garage of our old house and he found on the the frame of one of the doors in the garage had the kids' heights, you know, oh, like yeah, the, the markings. markers, sure, and yeah. the age. And I left it there. He went in there and took those frames off. And re, you know, who knows how much work it takes yeah. to actually reframe the door right. and paint it and caulk it. And, There's a reason those things come put together. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So he he took it off and drove it to my house. And he said, he's always real solemn. He said, brother, I have something for you. I'm going to put it here at your house next to your barn. Because he knows my new house gate and everything. Yeah, he, you know? uh, really? That's great. So um, he goes, brother, I'm going to put it next to your barn. If you don't want it, I understand. But I just couldn't, in my, in my heart, I couldn't keep it here at this house when I knew it belonged to you. So uh, you don't even have to say anything, but I just want to let you know it's over on your barn. It's like, yeah, he's, he's so cool. Just a good, good, yeah. good dude. Yeah. Man. So much about this photo is beautiful. The sky's beautiful. Mm-hmm. The trees are beautiful. The kids are beautiful. Part of what I really love is this right here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, and I, I zoom in on photos because yeah. I like looking around at details on photos. Photographers yeah. do that. I spend most of my life now detailing photos, yeah. you know, yeah. um, for particular ladies who don't like sure. the way their eyes look. <laughs> sure. Uh, I want to be 20 again in my eyes. Fine. I can do that. Yeah. Photoshop. Yeah. But, so I spend a lot of time in detail. When I zoomed, I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Just muddy, muddy feet. You hope it's mud anyway, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah that, so that's uh, James's property now. Wow. Um, and what this was, and I thought this was a neat pick. We called this the barefoot challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and I did this with them all the time. I'd say, all right, guys, barefoot challenge. And sometimes they would love it. River always loved it. But sometimes they would be like comfy on the couch and be like, no, I'm dead. I'd say, nope, barefoot challenge, let's go. So what we did is we started the house and we would walk barefoot all the way out through this field and make a big loop in the field and, and then go back to the house. And it was, there was a lot of reasons for the challenge, but it was, you know, to to roughen up your feet, to feel the earth, to feel the mud in your toes, to overcome the fear of what's in the grass. Mm -hmm. Are there ants or spiders or maybe there's a snake? But there's a confidence you kind of build up. And I just think it's important for kids to be barefoot. And uh, River never had a problem with it. 
<laughs> but <laughs> that was a way of life for him, right? Yeah. That was a way of life. So I remember at this particular barefoot challenge, we came around and we made the loop and we, they were walking ahead of me and I said, guys, stop, look at that sky. Hmm. So they looked back and I said, stop right there. And I snapped this picture and, and uh, I'm glad I did. It's beautiful. It's so cool. I mean, they probably were playing games before this. You made them go out and do yeah, this, right? Yeah, yep. <laughs> I think it's important for us as fathers to pull them away from the iPads and the... I think it's important for us fathers to pull ourselves away from the iPads and the... No doubt. And then do stuff like this. We're all drawn to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. No and doubt. I think the way you talk about photos on your... Uh, on your iPhone, we'll have to do a part two at some point, maybe part three, where you feel like scrolling, but amazing stories today. Thanks for sharing those. Man, sharing I, would, these I, would, photos. I hope there's a part two, because right? I've truly enjoyed this. And I'll, I'll, right now, I'm inviting you back for part two. Okay. So okay. You, you name the time, you pick the <laughs> okay. photos. Yeah, like you said, you'll probably have you know, <laughs> 60 or 70 photos you'll have in that, that folder. Of, Absolutely. Uh, that's awesome though. On the next episode of the Picture This Podcast, we sit down with Granger's wife, Amber Smith, on the day that we left the hospital, um, you know, Granger and I looked at each other and we said we were not going to let anything tear our family apart. We would do anything we could to bring good from our loss. You know, we have to keep his little legacy alive. So I started the River Kelly Fund. We accept donations all the time at riverkellyfund.org, but we've been able to give back to cancer, you know, um, St. Jude. We've given back to Dell Children's. We've given to citizens with disabilities. I mean, we're trying to build a park in Georgetown. so. It gives me purpose to keep going every single day, um, giving back to people in his honor because he was such a light and such a joy. And that's something that I know will keep, keep him alive for me, you know, to, for the rest of my life. Thanks so much for checking out the Picture This podcast. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you'll be sure to know when we release a new episode. They come out each Tuesday night at six o'clock central. Want to be the first to hear who will join us next? Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at picturethispodcast.co. Hey, it's the Ant-Man, and we'll see you next time on the Picture This Podcast. <laughs>